Welcome to section 1.1 day two, the properties of limits. Today's objective is to evaluate limits using the properties of limits. So finding limits algebraically. What do you do if the denominator goes to zero when you substitute? Well, algebraically, we can do a lot of stuff that we've been doing since you had intermediate algebra. We can take this and factor our denominator. So we have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 over x plus 2, x minus 2. From here, we can cancel this out, and now we have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 1 over x minus 2. Now we can substitute negative 2 in. This is 1 over negative 2 minus 2, which becomes negative 1 fourth. So if we have something that goes to 0 in the denominator, we can always look to see if we can simplify our function before we do our substitution in to see if we can get rid of that denominator going to 0. And in this case, we can factor, cancel out a factor, and we can then evaluate and we get the limit of negative one fourth. Next, we have the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x. This is not easy to do algebraically, but we can do this on your calculator and you will find if you take the sine of x over x, you will find that this limit is one. This is a very important thing to know that the limit of x approaches zero of sine of x over x equals one. You will need this in your assignment today because you're going to be able to simplify things by knowing that the sine of x over x is 1. All right, so we have these properties of limits. These are just some of them. The rest of them are in your book. First one we look at is the limit of f plus g of x. We can break this up and into the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x. Do the same things for subtraction. If we have some function where there's a bunch of subtraction or addition going in, we can break them into individual pieces. In this one, we have the limit of f minus g of x, and we can break it into the limit of f of x minus the limit of g of x. If we have things multiplied together, we can break them apart again. We have the limit of f times g of x equals the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x. Do the same thing for division. The limit of f over g of x equals the limit of f of x over the limit of g of x. We can just break these things up. And this last one works as long as g of x does not equal 0, because we can't divide by 0. There's also a constant multiple rule, and there's some other ones in the book, so make sure you look at the table in the book. So properties of limits. The limit of x approaches 3 of f of x equals negative 2. And then we have the limit of as x approaches 3 of g of x equals 6. We're going to use these and the property from before to show breaking these up and evaluating. When you do this, I need to see your properties being used. So you need to write it out. So here we have the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x plus f of x. And we need to break this up using our addition property. of g of x plus the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. We have broken it up. We know what these limits are, so we can then plug them in, and we get 6 minus 2 is 4. We have the next one on the right side. We have limit as x approaches 3 of f of x over g of x. Again, I want to see you using these properties. And we have the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. And then we will take them and we'll have f of x, which is negative 2, over 6. And this simplifies to negative 1 third. Next one we have is the limit as f of x times g of x. We're going to again break this up to the limit of f as x approaches 3 of f of x times the limit as x approaches 3 
of g of x. And we can get this is now negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12. Next one we have is the limit as x approaches 3 of g cubed of x. This is another one of those properties. And this is just, you could write it out separately, but this is going to be just the limit of g cubed of x when you do the powers. This is just going to be the limit, which is at 6 cubed, which is 216. And last, we have the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x minus f of x. We are again going to break this up and have the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x minus the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. And this is just going to be your g of x minus negative 2, which is 8. Those are some examples of using the properties of limits. And the properties of limits are on page 65 and 66. That is all for section 1.1 day 2, the properties of limits. You know, so I've put on here is a little table of some of the limits. One of the things you really need to know for your assignment today is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. This is also in your book, which is can be found on page 65. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.